Shut up and sit down. Well, howdy do. Hello, everybody. It is your host with the most, Andy Smith, 32-year veteran of the comic book industry. Hello. Um, you know, I don't do a lot of uh, the pre-recorded videos and stuff. I, I keep saying I want to do more, uh, but then time, life, family just gets in the way. And honestly, when I think do a pre-recorded video, draw a core draft. Strong core draft, guys. But uh, last weekend, I was out at this uh, new uh, uh, place, Hardy Boys Records and Comics, that my daughter and I found in a town close by, about a half hour away. And um, I found these two books. Uh, ooh, do, oh, I keep forgetting backwards. You read them in this order. You read this one and then this one. And it's Jim Ruggs' Hawk Grand, Des Grand Design uh about the Incredible Hulk, featuring the Incredible Hulk, his history, stuff like that. And I'm like, you know, I, I never read the X-Men ones. Full disclosure, I didn't read the X-Men Grand Designs, Grand Design, whatever, when it came out, because honestly, I looked through it and the art uh, by Ed Piscor is just not my cup of tea. I'm not bagging on his artwork by any means. It's just not what I like. Um, for instance, in comic strips, when I was growing up, I'd read the comic strips in the paper. My dad would toss me the comic section from the Washington Post. He'd be at one end of the table reading the newspaper. I'd be at the other end. Uh, actually, a really fond memory uh, growing up. And there were comic strips I just wouldn't read because I didn't like the art. Um, everybody has their own taste. Anyhow, didn't like, uh, don't like X-Men Grand Design artwork by Piscor. Never read it. Jim Rugg, though, I don't mind his art. So I'm like, you know, when these came out, cover price, six bucks. So, you know, you roll it up with tax and stuff. You're looking at 12 bucks for both of these boys. And I was like, no, nope, I just, I didn't care enough. You know, I read The Incredible Hulk growing up. I know a lot about the character being one of my favorites. So I was like, nah, I don't care. But these were a dollar each at that shop. So I was like, oh, buck each, I'll get them. So I got them and I got to admit, reading through it, I didn't realize, and you'll call me late to the party because yeah, this came out in uh, 2022. So I guess a year ago or so is when this book came out, but um, I didn't know what these books were about. I just thought, oh, it's Jim Ruggs uh, retelling of, you know, the Hulk, which other artists have done. And I was like, okay, well, I can get on board with that. But then I read it and each one of these, there's no page count. God forbid they put page numbers in anything anymore. Okay. So in the back, there is an index. So 40 pages. Uh, so each one of these is 40 pages. And I mean, uh, comment below and feel free to say, Andy, you're just a dumbass. I didn't realize these were just freaking cliff notes, cliff notes. That's all these are, are cliff notes. You know, you'd get a book in high school to read for a book report. And if you were lazy, like some people, not saying me, but some people, you might just go get the cliff notes version. But of course, the teachers would always mess with you and try to throw things in uh, that you had to have in your book report that weren't in the cliff notes. Anyhow, I don't mind cliff notes. They're helpful. But from a comic book standpoint, I don't know. 
call me weird, call me an oddball, but I don't just want a book of freaking cliff notes where at the end of it, in the back, you can read over the two pages, these two pages of what Jim was summarizing, pages one through five. The origin of the hawk was told in Incredible Hawk number one, 1962. No shit. Uh, that issue featured the first appearance of Bruce Banner, Thaddeus Thunderbolt Ross, Rick Jones, Betty Ross, blah, blah, blah. Okay, that's cool. There are trade paperbacks that uh, I just would rather read because then I get the full story, not just cliff notes. You know, comic books are a visual medium, and I would think that as a comic book enthusiast, you would rather get the full immersive story by reading a reprint of the full thing to really get the, the full grasp, you know, to really get involved in it. And then, you know, the other thing is, yes, Jim Rugg drew some stuff, oops, but then a lot of stuff, it's just like, hey, that's a cool image. I'll just trace it or do my version of it, you know? And I just feel like, if uh, I guess I'm trying to look at it from the outside in to where, you know, maybe you're a 15, 16 year old person getting this and you're like, oh, wow, all this stuff happened. Let me go back and buy the trades or, or you know, get the back issues. Right. So but then I go, well, then this is just a big marketing ploy. I mean, you literally, I just paid six bucks for advertising is kind of how I look at it as well. Once again, correct me if I'm wrong, but I felt like this was 80 pages of advertising to go, now go buy the trade paperbacks uh, or the back issues. And the back issues, that's fine because, you know, honestly, if you're going to buy a back issue of a, of a comic, that money goes directly to the retailer. But if you're buying the trades and stuff, depending how old they are, you know, you're, you know, it's just Marvel pimping, you know, their wares. Another thing I'm curious about, I don't know how these books came about. I don't know if, uh, if Ed, because Ed did start with X-Men Grand Design, then it went to this and then it went to the Fantastic Four one by uh, Tom Scioli. Excuse me if I pronounced his name wrong. Um, but did Marvel go to them and say, hey, we like what you guys do. Uh, we want to hire, you know, look, Ed Piscor, uh, Jim Rugg, Tom, they're what I call not mainstream artists. Not a knock, because when I think of mainstream comic artists, at least when I was growing up, going to the Kubert School and stuff, you were talking about guys that were looking to get work for Marvel and DC drawing mainstream superhero stuff. Um you know, Ed's art, Jim's art, Tom's art isn't necessarily stuff I would put on uh, a mainstream monthly book because you want to reach mass appeal to sell the most copies possible. And I don't think these guys, uh, their art styles reach that mass appeal to sell the most books. So once again, did Marvel go to Ed and say, hey, Ed, we've seen your previous work. We got this great idea. We want you to take one of our best properties, X-Men, from day one to present day, you know, when Ed was doing the book, and do cliff notes. Go run with it. And, or, I don't know, did, did Ed pitch the idea to them? I don't know. But if, if it is the latter where, you know, Ed was like, Marvel, I got this great idea. This is a phone, by the way. For anybody that doesn't know, back in the day, uh, when we had to, had uh, phones connected with wires in our house, you would do this. Hello. Now, the funny thing is when you improvise, you don't do that because that's not a phone. When you improvise, uh, one of my tangents, ADHD guys, uh, when you're improvising, you want to actually make it look like you're holding an object. So you would do this for a phone. Hello? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. All right. And hang it up because that's how you held a phone. Now with cell phones, you hold it more like this. Oh, let me get my cell phone. Hello. Oh, push the buttons on the cell phone. Anyhow, back to the story. You know, did Ed 
pitch this to Marvel? And if he did, you know, if he called up Marvel and said, uh, hey, Marvel, I got this great idea. You know, whoever was the big dog when he pitched it, I don't know if it was Casada, I have no idea. But said, Marvel, I got this great idea. I want to do a six issue miniseries. I don't even know if it was four or six for the first one. Once again, never read it. Um, but I talked to Dennis, my co host of the Dennis and Andy show about it. And he's like, oh, yeah, it's just Cl X Men Grand Design, it's just Cliff Notes. Um, which he didn't seem super fond of, but he's a big X-Men guy, buys all the X-Men stuff. Anyhow, if if these guys pitched it to Marvel, like, hey, I got this great idea. I want to take the whole history of X-Men and do uh, a six-issue miniseries and uh, and just retell the, the, the whole history. And Marvel goes, you're going to take six oversized issues let's say they were 40 pages each so that's actually 12 issues anyhow uh regular comic size and retell 60 years of x-men and six 40 page issues <sighs> sure why not um i don't think i'd do it i i don't know what those guys got paid to do this stuff this is where the business side of my brain comes in and not the art side um Look, if Ed pitched it and he got a good writing and art rate, you know, the whole package basically right. I'm pretty sure he probably colored it as well. So if they they gave him a great rate to do it and he sold them on the idea, the art creative side of me, artist side of me goes, go Ed, soak them for that money. Because to me, this is honestly just kind of uh, uh, a grift, honestly, to, to get a nice paycheck. You know, and if they sold well enough to get royalties and then, of course, these were collected into oversized editions and stuff. If they pitched this idea to Marvel and Marvel was dumb enough to go, hey, that's a great idea. Cliff notes, visual cliff notes. Let's do it. I guess more power to the creator sitting there collecting that check for basically just having to go through and pick out the the classic scenes because that's what you're drawing. You're, you're showing the classic highlighted moments in these books. I'm sure there are some moments that, you know, were, were, you know, more subtle, whatever, but that's what you're overall doing. Right. Then once again, more power to the creator. It's like back in the early nineties when um, creators were just getting huge amounts for, for books. Um, you know, in the early nineties uh, books were blowing up royalties were doing really well and to keep artists at companies the company would go to a specific artist that they considered you know their hot top talent and go instead of a page rate we're going to pay you x amount of dollars per issue so for instance back then you know i know artists that were getting twenty thousand bucks an issue to do just pencils on a book 20 pages just to make the math easy, you know, a thousand bucks a page for pencils on the book. Um, and I think they got royalties on top of that. Don't quote me on it, but either way, even if they didn't get royalties on top, you know, 20 grand an issue, these guys were doing eight, 10 issues a year. That's a hell of a paycheck. I don't, uh, I don't begrudge any of the artists because why would you turn that down? Now, from a business standpoint, I'd be looking at the the books and the sales and go, does this justify, you know, if this artist is like, now I'm going to go over to the competition, you know, could you get somebody else that's, that's, you know, a good artist, good storyteller to fill that slot and the book still sells the numbers. And from a business point, you're saving money. Anyhow, now if Marvel went to these guys and said, Hey, we love your independent art style. It's cool. It's not mainstream. We want you to do this Cliff Notes version of the book. And, uh, you know, we'll pay you X amount. Then once again, as the creator, you're going, wait a second. You, you want me to just sum up the history of the Hulk over two issues, basically Cliff Notes, where... 
I can summarize the stuff how I want, obviously get editorial approval, pick the scenes, draw the stuff. I could take key moments and just slap them on a light box. Oh, you know, take a great Jack Kirby shot, slap it on a light box and ink it and add my style to it. Because, you know, we're doing cliff notes and we want people to feel like they're they're getting their original stuff. So uh, let me see. Looking through um, dropping papers. Uh, I could take. Doo, doo, doo. I could take. Oh, a, a, a shot of uh, when the Hulk was, uh, you know, trying to go undercover, let's say, and uh, throw a fit on it and poke at Eric Larson and just trace off an Eric Larson drawing. Wow, I could take a Liam Sharp drawing and just, you know, trace it off. Awesome. What else can I do to, to oh, look at that. I could take a Dale Keown drawing and just, just swipe it, a Gary Frank drawing, and just swipe it. Whoa, and you guys are going to pay me? That's great. Um, oh, look, I'll take a Dale Keown drawing and then some Sal Buscema stuff and, and Todd McFarlane, whatever, and then sprinkle in some of my own drawing as well. You know, I mean, look, once again, nothing against Jim Rugg personally, but that art style, it's just not my cup of tea. I don't consider it mainstream. I don't know how well these books sold. Maybe they sold tons. Maybe Marvel made tons of money on these books and, you know, really profited like, wow, we paid these guys this much and we made this much money. We're geniuses and we got people to pay six bucks an issue for Cliff Notes. Boom. I don't know. I'm just glad I only paid a dollar a piece for these. Um when I buy stuff for a dollar a piece, I'll put them away in my long boxes. Every year, I do. A, I take a weekend. I go through all the stuff I own, and when I get the stuff like this, and I realize I paid a dollar for it, uh, I'll usually uh, purge it. I can usually every year go through a long box worth of stuff, you know, or pull out a long box worth of stuff for my comics. And mostly it's stuff I bought for 50 cents or a dollar. And uh, I take them to a shop and get store credit and just get rid of the stuff. And I have a feeling a year from now, that is most likely what's going to happen with these. If you bought these and you liked them, please comment below. I mean, maybe it's because I have a long history with this character and didn't find anything new about this stuff and just really looked at it as a grift cash grab and that's all it is so let me know what you think that's my rant every now and then i just want to go off on one you know hey if you want to see more videos like this let me know uh but also uh check out core draft the reckoning not a grift not a not a cash grab just a great great book 76 pages of ball busting barbarian action Core Draft the Reckoning tells the tale of Core Draft, a member of the Red Lions tribe who, when he's out one day with his girlfriend, Adriana, the lovely sorceress Adriana, on a small quest, you might call it, a small mission for uh, his tribe, they come back to the tribe to see that it was overrun by a legion of the undead. And their whole tribe, his whole tribe was slaughtered. And now he is the sole survivor of the Red Lines tribe. And he needs to go out with Adriana and help from others to find out who slaughtered his tribe, why it was done, who set out these this, this legion of the undead upon his tribe to take them out in such a vicious way. What is the mystery how does it unfold? Find out in Core Draft The Reckoning. I've got five different covers to choose from. This is the Bud Root variant cover. Uh, you don't have to get them all. Just pick one. This is like Burger King. Have it your way. On checkout, if you pick Bud's cover, but you like one of the others, you can add it on for a very nominal shipping fee. So basically, you get two books for a low shipping rate. 
or there is a get it all package. There's so many things we customize for you guys. Uh, we've got a role playing game module that my buddy Dennis, who uh, co-created the book, is writing for you guys to play if you're into role playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and such. All the core draft main characters are playable characters. Check it out. There's an oversized artist edition edition featuring my art in black and white. A couple t-shirts to choose from. Those will be coming down at the end of uh, July. So if you want the t-shirts or if you want a t-shirt and you've been saying, eh, I'll get it. They're not going anywhere. They are going somewhere. They're going to be leaving the campaign soon. There's the main t-shirt by me. Uh, the guys, the t-shirt designers did a fantastic job stylizing uh, the cover art into a shirt. And then, yes, we did do the Bud Root Lilneth uh, cover as a t-shirt as well in beautiful full color. And we have a beanie to keep your head warm if you're like me or if you have hair. Everybody likes a nice beanie. You look cool. Beanies are cool. Uh, so check it out, guys. Thank you for joining me on this little rant uh, of mine. And uh, I'll catch you guys later. Maybe I'll do another video. We'll see. Uh, this kind of felt good. It felt fun. And I love doing live streams as well. Anyhow, guys, have a great weekend. We'll catch you later. Bye-bye, everybody.